Hi. Wow, a full room. This is wonderful. Thank you all for being here. This is such an honor to read poems among poets who I admire so deeply and with these fabulous musicians. Um, so I'm going to uh, read a poem from my new book, Flutter Kick, which just came out last month. Um, and it's a poem called Passenger Pigeon. This book has a lot of um, work about motherhood and about origin and migration. My mother is uh, not from America, and so going back to finding where people are from. Um, and as soon as I wrote this poem, I sent it to Scott and said, I think maybe this could be a song. We worked together at Emerson, um, and uh, he took me up on it. So this is called Passenger Pigeon. I read once that they traveled in flocks big as hurricanes and as fast, millions of birds flying so low, you almost didn't need a gun to catch one. Just reach an arm up and grab. Too easy, nuisance birds landing and deflowering a tree or field in minutes, then lolling around, dirtying the ground, before the swift, swirling rise toward elsewhere. Who was their passenger? Or is passage the important part, the routes they moved through air? We care so much about who belongs where, arm ourselves against the imaginary. No one believed they could die out. There were so many. traveled in flocks big as hurricanes and as fast millions of birds flying so low you almost didn't need a gun to catch one just reach an arm up and grab too easy nuisance birds unfair to have to follow that. <laughs> Thank you. Um, the next poem I'll read um, is an ekphrastic poem. Um, I was in Montana a few years ago and I came across an artist book by the artist Shelley Julian Bundy. Um, and the book was a series of portraits of South Dakotan women, um, all of whom were identified by their nearest male relative and all of them had sort of little captions. Um, so this one is captioned, this is Mrs. Lawrence Schlegel from outside of Hettinger, North Dakota. She left for good one time, but came back. Nobody ever asked about it. <laughs> and I couldn't resist 
as you can imagine. So this poem is called One Time. And when Scott said it, he changed it a little bit. And he retitled it, She Left for Good One Time, but came back, um, which is also a good title. Um, I'm going to read the, the, my version. <laughs> one time. She left for good one time, but came back. She let her hair grow long and the grays come in. Nobody ever asked about it, but she left for good one time. She followed the fence line out, the grass dry and rust tipped where it chased her calves. She was wearing the wrong shoes and no socks either, but she'd left and it was for good. Two does started from their beds under a choke cherry. They cleared the top wire of the fence almost before she'd seen them and kept moving into the trees by the ditch. She was going and she was gone, mosquitoes tracking her shoulder blades, wringing her ankles. She kept the fence line to her left and the creek to her right as she left, for good, for better or for worse, the dishes and whatever had been said at dinner, the whole damn dinner. She was leaving. She was and was and was. The smell of her falling under sage rush. No wind yet, and the sun not down. You'll take what God gives you, they said, as her children wriggled beside her, and the last bite on her plate gave her the fish eye. But she'd left for good, and the creek agreed, flashing the last acre until it slid under the single barbed strand that marked the neighbor's land, and someone else called someone else in to supper. It would be bedtime soon, the night hawks buzzing the trees for insects, their chicks lodged among river stones below. It had been for good when she left, all of it she knew, and also, that someone would need a last drink of water now, and a song from when you were little. Someone would need to touch her hair, to pat it softly until sleep came, this time and for good. She'd left. 
left for good and the creek agreed flashing the last acre until it slid under the single barbed strand that marked the neighbor's land and someone else called someone else into supper it would be bedtime soon the night hawks buzzing the trees for insects their cheeks lodged among river stones below it had been for good when she left all of it she knew she knew and also that someone would need a last drink of water now and a song from when you were little someone would need to touch her hair to pat it softly until sleep came this time and for good 